Yeah. No board. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Okay. Um, well, I am recording now, and so um, I had been in my hat all morning when I took it off. It looked like I got hit with a, a snowball on the side of the head, so I will leave my hat off so that none of you have to go, oh my god, doesn't he have a comb? <clears throat> so um, I'm glad that a few of you are here today, and um, we're just going to go over a couple things. I'm probably not going to try to um, be too edifying today because I think people's brains are really filling up and we're getting a lot of all of this information is coming in whether it's about listings or whether it's about contracts or whatever and and I know that um, I contribute to that I, I sometimes feel like the smokestack at the lumber mill I just sent this as an email to Bobby in Twin Falls and I just generate plumes and spews of smoke and you know, it, it might be helpful, but a lot of times it just becomes more smoke, and I want to try to avoid that. So we'll talk about a few things today, but basically I've put together a bunch of links that um, I hope will help uh, any or all of you get better at social media stuff, particularly the two big social media movers, which are um, Instagram and uh, what's the other one? Facebook. That's what it is. Facebook. Um, why don't I touch on LinkedIn? Why don't I touch on Pinterest? Why don't I touch on Indeed or anything like that? Because I just think, I, I don't know, I just think as we've discussed on previous calls and I've discussed with some of you individually, you can get so focused on all of this intraweb stuff, this social media stuff that you forget, hi Karen, you forget to do your stinking job, which is to get on this, but not do this and just be like this. It's a lot of this is I know, and this is made up of the same letters as an S word, but I'm telling you, don't get so focused on social media that you forget to make your calls. That being said, we're gonna talk about social media today. So how's that for hypocritical? Okay, um, at any moment, please jump in and say, no, this is a better way to do it, or this is what I found, or that was dumb, or whatever, because I do not have the keys to this kingdom. I just know a few things, and the best way for these things to happen is for people like Kelly Mays, who just jumped on and is one of our best social media people, to chime in and say, this works for me. Or I'm not sharing my secrets because I'm so good and I'm not going to do that. So please, uh, let's make this a, a uh, all-inclusive affair. There's Kelly. See, I compliment her and then she shows her face and that's great. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Alan. How are you guys? Okay, let's keep going then. Ha <laughs> ha. Alan, we missed you on our call this morning. It was great. We made fun of British people all morning. Okay, uh, social media, the big two, Instagram and Facebook. Um, here are a couple of philosophical things that I'm going to share with you. Again, please ignore, uh, reject, uh, embrace, or argue with any of these. First of all, I don't feel like in Instagram you need to have two accounts, a business and a personal one. You can totally feel differently. If your personal one's very personal, then have a business one. But what I've seen a lot with Instagram is uh, confusion and static with followers and with me trying to follow someone, with me trying to like things, when a realtor has their personal thing and a real estate thing. Because sometimes they're posting the same thing to both, and that's confusing for me. Um, my sense is that a good realtor is a good person, and any one of my friends should be following me as an in, entire entity. So I just think that um, from my philosophy with Instagram is that having one account where you do your stuff and then you do your real estate stuff is fine. Again, if you feel like you wanna keep those things separate, this is not a law, this is just me going as a, as a follower like, Oh, I don't know which one I need to like or which one to tag if I'm tagging an agent. It gets confusing. Any thoughts about that, Kelly? I, I can't, uh, I, I know you have a couple out there. You have Head of States, you have Maeve's group, you have Kelly Maeve's. Yeah, what, what's your thought? Using them for different things, then it's fine to have multiple accounts. Um, I have multiple because of that. Um, Chapita Estates, I have different because at some point I can turn that over to the homeowners if they wanted to do something with that. Um, and the team, of course, I have a different one for the team than for myself personally. So um, I don't hide the fact on my personal one that I'm a realtor because I have different people following both. Um, and my business one is very much just business. That's excellent. And, and so 
That's exactly one, what I want to hear is someone say, well, here's, here's the way I do it, which is totally different than what you just said, ding dong. And that's totally fine here. Um, my, the best realtors have really good connections with their people. Right. And so whether you have multiple accounts or one account, make sure that you are being yourself on it. Uh, I, I guess the, I think there's a fatigue setting in, uh, a social media fatigue, and we're encouraged to follow so much stuff, which is exactly what I'm going to freaking do today. Sorry, but um, I, I almost think in 2019, we need to start erring on the side of less is more because the, the uh, amount of stuff, the amount of noise out there is increasing every day as we know. And so um, that's why I'm sort of saying maybe let's, let's uh, put it together. Just a, just a thought. Um, however, if you have a real estate dedicated page, hi Pam, I'm sorry that they were doing something there. And I can't get on my Interesting. Um, Pam Colesworthy who, Colesworthy, who is our best social media, one of our best social media people in our office is now um, sitting on my shoulder like the angel. You should, I have seven devils, so there's no room. At any rate, if you have a real estate dedicated page, be very, very careful not to just be Mr. or Mrs. Real Estate only, because that gets really tiring. It gets really one dimensional. And um, no matter who's following you, they want to see a personality behind that real estate stuff. Okay. So if you've got, and we're talking about Instagram right now, because Facebook has a different narrative here, but if you're doing an Instagram business page to go, as, as a compliment to your personal page, try to make it personal, even though it's your business page. Um, I know I resonate or I know I identify more with businesses who feel like there's a person there and not just selling products all the time, not just talking about a new listing all the time, which you can do. That's the whole point. But make sure that you uh, balance it with some personality. OK, so that's sort of my philosophy about um, Instagram in the big picture. Um, we're going to now look at some examples. And Chelsea just said that Robert Yazbek does a great job with Instagram and in, in uh, Steamboat. I totally disagree, Chelsea, but we'll look at it anyway. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and what I've done is I put together five. I, I searched. I did this crazy, crazy thing. I went online and I typed in Google, and then I did this search, and it was amazing. All these things came up. Wow. And so I put together what I think are five fairly useful sites. If you have a half hour where nothing's happening, ha ha ha, and you want to learn about Instagram, I've collected some sites for you that you can um, take a look at, and I'll send these with the recording. Uh, but we're going to look at some of what I think are our better uh, sites, our Instagram sites, uh, both within our company as well as in the real estate world. And uh, we're just going to beat this up a little bit. Okay. So uh, I see a chat. I see a chat. No, that was Chelsea's. Chelsea was the teacher's pet at her school at, in on the border of New York and Pennsylvania, Mansfield College. I never even knew that that existed. Do you know that existed? Mansfield? I don't know. Never heard of it. We're going to check into that, Chelsea. That sounds a little bit made up. Okay. So um, make sure I have the right thing. Now I'm going to share my screen. Okay. You should see a, a Word doc here, which I know is really, really sexy. Wow, a Word doc with links on it. This is the best fan club I've ever attended. Chelsea's like, why did I take this job? Okay, so here are some of the links that I'm gonna send to you um, that have information. Let's just go ahead and click one of these and see what happens. Small businesses. So it, it's stuff like this that's gonna help you think about ways to maybe juice your Instagram game, maybe ways to promote your business. Here's some stuff about personal versus professional. Um, Kelly wrote this. Um, setting up your, so this really goes back, to, Kelly didn't write this, I'm kidding. That really goes into the basics of setting this stuff up. Hopefully you're all beyond that. And I don't have an inventory of all of our agents and all of your use of Instagram, but I guess I should have started by saying, look, if you're not on Instagram, you need to be over a billion users, okay? You need to be on Instagram. Um, I'm coaching an agent in Telluride whose name uh, rhymes with Marin Babarthi. Um, I don't wanna say her name, but uh, Karen has an Instagram account. Sorry, Karen has an Instagram account and I scolded her, because that's what coaches do, uh, because she only had two posts on there. And here is a very active, energetic, smart person with two Instagram posts. That's not okay, right, Karen? We've decided that she's gonna up her game significantly. Um, so 
you need to have an Instagram page, whether it's just a personal or whether you have a personal and a business like my lovely Pam here, um, you need to have that in 2019. And this is all about how to do it in here. Okay, here's engaging content. This is a realtor whose name is Seth something, I don't know, something, something. But um, this is an example of a way to make a personal slash real estate post, right? You may not like this photo, I'm not sure I'm a fan of it, but the example is, here's a for sale sign, just sold, a guy's super excited, a kid's super excited, it's in front of a brownstone, whatever, oh, it's Ryan, Ryan Sir, uh, I hate hard last names, man, they drive me crazy. So uh, that that's an example of how to sort of merge in one post a, a business and a personal, side to things okay and i think that's a that's a great thing i am gonna take off my hat because i'm getting hot sorry um it's got do's and don'ts on this and how to post photos all of that stuff um it even tries to sell you on this website called box brownies which improves your photos for a small fee so it takes this photo and turns it into that you can actually do that in your if you have a pc you can edit your photos that way. And then it goes into capturing leads and, and all of this sort of stuff. I am not here to say, use any kind of promotional stuff on Instagram. I'm not here to say spend money so that your thing comes <laughs> a sponsored link and you can learn more at the bottom. In fact, I would be here to say those things drive me nuts. One of the reasons I really like Instagram is to me, it always feels like I'm talking to my friends. Debate me on this totally. I want different opinions, but I feel like Instagram is where I, it's like, it's like a party that I'm at. And maybe I don't know everybody, but everybody there at that party, we're going to have like interests. We're going to have like uh, dreams and some sort of shared experience. That's why I like Instagram because it feels much more intimate to me. Whereas Facebook, and I'll talk more about this later, feels more billboardy to me and not nearly as party oriented, but more of like, uh, I don't know, I'm in a mall with a bunch of other people. So Instagram for me is more intimate, which is why I don't encourage my agents to, to like uh, promote by business ads on Instagram because that takes away some of the intimacy. And it goes back to that fatigue thing that I think a lot of us are feeling about all the social media stuff out there. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's, that's just a lot of that. Let's go back to this <coughs> page here. Um, IG accounts to consider following. Instagram is a is a mobile app, right? You can only interface with it, which is to say, do stuff on it via your phone or your iPad. I've never used that. I don't know. At any rate, it's mainly a phone app. You can find the stuff on your computer, but you can't do anything on your computer. You can't, unless they've changed last night without telling me, you can't post a photo on your computer to your Instagram account. You have to do it uh, via your phone or maybe an iPad, I'm not sure. So, but we're gonna look at some of these things on the computer so you can just see what I'm talking about. Here's a guy who, um, the Oracle, he just presented at the Tom Ferry Elite Summit. He presented at our leadership meeting in Grand Junction. The guy's phenomenal. You need to follow this guy, Steve Harney. So, when you're in your Instagram, you just go to search and you type in someone's name and you get a bunch of different options and some of them are kind of disgusting, but whatever, you click on the one you want and then you're following it. This guy is probably the smartest real estate brain working right now outside of our company. Uh, <laughs> and so he, every, about every day he has a video blog of just saying that he just says some stuff and it's great. Uh, and so... Here's an example of today's. This is so easy to do. You can do this through Instagram. You can click video and you can record yourself and it posts immediately. Instagram is trying to make things so seamless, just like Facebook has done, that you don't even have to think about how to do this. But just um, let's, let's just watch this for a second because it's pretty good. So first of all, here's the name and then the caption. It's time to stop worrying and get back to work. Just saying, he puts just saying at the end of all of his captions. Then he has some hashtags which we'll talk about in a, in a little bit as well. Um, and then these are the comments from other people, how many views, when it's posted, all of that stuff.
Okay. It sounds like people <laughs> stop. People did not hear that. No. Sorry if you didn't. Um, okay, and it was only 48 seconds of your life, so we'll move off from this. But um, okay, very simple, very easy, very direct. If, if I'm a really good agent, I'm going to consider doing this maybe once a week or once every two weeks. Just, um, you know, catching up with Pam. Or if we're at a hot dog stand, catch up with Pam. Or catching up with, in Ketchum with Pam. Okay, I got a smile. I can stop now. All right. So this is a super easy way. And if you, whether it's your business or your personal, and this actually makes more sense on a business page, to have a consistent cadence of this type of thing which isn't, I mean, all you have to do is go like this, push the selfie button, uh, go to Instagram, record, say your thing, be yourself, have something interesting, and you're going to increase your, your viewership. I guarantee it. Have something interesting. So Pam's back here um, barking at me that you need to have something interesting. So what do you mean? I can't come up with anything interesting every day. No, I'm saying every week or so. I, I think if you do this every day, you're going to, None of us are Steve Harney, okay? So I'm saying weekly or bi-weekly, but just regularly. Some of you know so much about your market, and I'll pick on Kelly because she's first in my roster here. Kelly Mays is one of the best real estate agents I've ever seen, and she knows about this, that, and the other, but she never acts like she knows everything, which is awesome. Those are the people I want to listen to, and those are the people whose videos I would watch, and you only get 59 seconds before Instagram cuts out. So guess what? You can't bore anyone. Give this a shot and see how it feels. You'll get better at it. And I guarantee you, your viewership will go up and people will start coming to you and thinking of you as the authority because you're de delivering relevant information. Okay. All right. So that was Steve Harney. Um, let's see. Okay. Let me check the chat. I'm going to stop share and check chat. Was it about the sound mainly? Uh, yeah. Sorry, Jennifer. Uh, so you didn't hear Steve Harney. You can hear him. He was basically saying, dude, in he didn't say dude because he's from New York. He said interest rates are lower than they've been in 10 months. People need to be active right now. That's basically what he said. Okay. All right. But it works for him because he does this regularly and he's got stats to back it up. And so if you do this once and then leave it be, it's probably not going to work for you. You're going to be like, oh, I didn't get any increase in viewership. Well, be regular about it. Okay, just like punishing your kid. If you only do it once, punishment, what am I talking about? <laughs> I love my son. All right, so um, I'm gonna go back to sharing here. And I wanna show a couple more of these. Um, let's see, this is our Kingston Lane guy who is over the top genius. And I don't mean to just be showing the exceptional um, people, but I, I wanna make sure that you Oh, that didn't work. I want to make sure you, you see some of the, the higher end folks out here. Christopher Chu, who's one of the leading CB agents in the, in the world. He works in Beverly Hills. He did a five part video this last night or this morning. Probably a little bit much, but he's got a ton of followers and Christopher Chu is held up as the best social Instagram real estate agent in the world. Anyone that ever says, oh, well, Instagram real estate, how do you do it? They say, go follow Christopher Chu real estate. It's personal. He taught in this one, he talks about, and I'm not going to play it because you won't be able to hear it. He talks about what a crappy day he had with some sellers who just won't listen to him. It's real stuff. It's so good. And so, and that's why I think that Instagram is a party for people like me and people that I would like. And even if I don't know them, I would probably have something in common because we're at the same party. Okay, so you can do that sort of thing here. So Christopher Chu Real Estate is a good one to follow. Uh, let me close that just so I get rid of some things. Uh, Tiffany Bova, um, shoot, I'm bummed the sound doesn't work because Dana Buxton, who's an agent in our office here, had an open house yesterday uh, at their really cool new construction in Haley. And she called me to come and do a video because we try to do that. We posted it on our Facebook and I said, I, I can't do it. Um, I, I just couldn't get to it. So guess what she did? She went outside and she did that very thing that Steve Harney did, pushed Instagram, pushed video. And I'll just show you without playing the sound. She spent 45 seconds saying, here I am. And it's awesome. Hey, 
Can you, can you hear this? Cranbrook in Northridge, one of our new listings. It's brand new construction and it's open today, 11 to 1. Uh, but if you can't make it out, I thought I'd go ahead and give you a quick video tour. So come along and take a peek. I think the days of perfect professional videography and glistening light, and like it's awesome when it's used, but right, but it doesn't need to be that anymore. People want immediate stuff. This is immediate. Um, I don't know if she wrote an offer yesterday because of this, but uh, this is good stuff. Okay. All right. So it was that simple. And she went from going, oh my God, how am I going to publicize this? Because Eric's up and catch him and I and to doing it herself. And uh, I think it's great. Um, so you'll get these different ones to look at uh, when I send this out. But anyway, there's a ton of information on these five links, as well as all of these examples. And I'll put Robert Yazbek on here just so Chelsea doesn't get mad at me. I don't even like Robert, but um, Robert's a good one to not emulate. How about that? Just kidding, Bobby, you're awesome. Okay. Um, a couple things about Instagram, generally speaking. Uh, most of you know you also have the chance now to do stories, which, um, well, they bug the crap out of me. I'm telling, they, they seem so, uh, no offense to anyone who uses stories, they bug me. Okay, I guess I'm old fashioned. I like my feed. It feels nice. The stories ones feels like the dude at the party that's drank too much and be like, hey, watch me jump into the pool. That's just how I feel about them. Uh, but the benefit is they live at the top. So for a 24 hour period, your story is at the top of the Instagram feed for 24 hours. Meaning all the, all the vertical swiping and sweeping I do, your story stays up there. Um, and so that puts you top of mind, so to speak. And it get, and it's a vertical thing and you can do more fun stuff and you can add more things. Um, so if you're using stories, is anyone using stories instead of just the feed for your Instagrams? Kelly, tell me why you do that. This is awesome. Kelly and I are just gonna go at it today. <laughs> uh, I use stories because everybody sees it. The problem with your newsfeed is um, just like Facebook's algorithms, you only see the people you interact with. Um, it's not the same way with your um, stories. It shows every story for anybody who you follow um, that actually uses stories. So it's not just your it's not just your group. It goes right. Bigger than that. Yep. Do you, Kelly, yep. treat your content any differently in using stories? Um, I do because you can actually tell a story in your stories. So you can do. Um, if, if you guys follow our Maves group one, um, we do quite a bit on stories on Maves group. Like we'll talk about, you know, top renovation projects for 2019. And one story page will be one thing and then the next one will be something else and the next one will be something else. So it actually, you can actually kind of have more of a conversation with your audience instead of just a stagnant picture. Excellent, okay. And so that's, Kelly's using that to really good effect and she's, She's using it because it's called story. She's, she's um, leveraging that, which is fantastic. A couple things that you can't do on stories that you can do on your feed is you really can't put the captions that we saw earlier. You can write on your photos and all of that sort of thing, but correct Kelly, like there's not a, you, you don't do hashtags and captions on, on, you on a story. Hashtag, um, you can hashtag and if you get over 10,000 followers, you can actually link to things in there too. So good luck with that. Okay. Over 10,000. Yeah. yeah. By the end of the year, Kelly's going to be able to link to things because she's going to get 10,000 followers. I can feel it. Um, yeah. I have so, to actually jump off because I've got to get to a meeting, but I'm bummed to miss this. I'll catch it on the video later. I'm not sending it to you. Okay. Thanks, Kelly. Keep up the great work. Okay. Uh, Chelsea's asking, would it be redundant to use the same thing in your feed as your story? I'm so glad you said that. Um, this goes back to my, or asked that, this goes back to my fatigue. Um, philosophy. And again, guys, this is just me being a, sort of a cynical, almost 50 guy that lives in Sun Valley. So if you're younger, you old, whatever, have your own opinions. But for me, totally overdoing it. If you put the same thing in your feed as your story, I think your viewers are going to be like, dude, leave me alone. Give me something new or don't give me it twice. Right? Similarly, 
and you can argue with me on this too, whoever wants to argue. If you, I'm jumping ahead, but on Facebook, no, which way does it go? On Instagram, you can also post whatever you just posted to Instagram. You can click a button because now they're married. You can click a button and it'll go to your Facebook. The same post, right? I do not like that because it's like, I just liked you over here. And now you want me to go over here and like that too? Which one did I like? Why? Why do I have to do see this twice? No. No, Pam's disagreeing. Lay it on me, Pam. Well, you, I may have a completely different audience. Or maybe my uh, concentric circles are the, the, the little, what's that thing? You know? The Venn diagram. Yeah, that little overlapping part is really small. So there's no problem with that. I mean, maybe not everything, but if you have the option. Click here or don't click here. I, I wouldn't just dismiss it. Excellent. That's what I want to hear is someone saying, no, you're wrong, because you've got to know your audience. And if your audience, some of them are here and some of them are there, then it does definitely make sense to double post. If you're, if you know that you, if you assume your audience is in both places all the time, think more carefully about it, maybe. Um, here's my, here's the best rule of thumb. Whatever you like, do more of that. Whatever bugs you individually, do less of that. Does that make sense? So for me, if something bugs me, I'm going to do less of that because that's because I got to be true to myself as a social media uh, person. Heidi says everyone will not see all of your posts unless they are stalking you. Um, so what do you mean, Heidi? Uh, flesh that out a little bit. And Chelsea, you can jump in too since you have a comment. I just, I feel like people, unless someone is like, literally following all your pages and checking up on your pages daily they're not going to see everything you post and it is good to share the same content because then you'll have that opportunity of more people seeing it and if someone sees it twice who cares especially if it's a good post yeah okay okay um so do you say do it every time or only when the the posts are um, of a higher quality in your opinion Either way, I mean, if it, it's good to have high quality posts just in general. Um, sure. Some yeah. things don't always work as well on Instagram as they do on Facebook. So depending on that type of thing, if, if it's a post that really has to have a link to it, then Facebook is going to be better because Instagram doesn't allow you to link unless Excellent. you get over that 10,000 followers. Yeah, like Kelly the other said. Gal was saying. Yeah. yeah. Chelsea, anything else? No, that was that was pretty much what I was gonna say. As long as they're quality posts, posting them twice, getting someone to you know be like, oh wow, it, you know, CBDP is showing really cool stuff lately. I'm gonna go check out their Instagram more often. Okay, um, Chrissy, you've done a nice job of laying low here, but uh, why don't you give us some feedback here as well? Chrissy is R O M in Bozeman, and if you need to follow CBDP Bozeman, I think they do a great job with their office's posts. Sure. Well, I have a few thoughts. So I actually always pretty much double post everything we put on Instagram goes to our Facebook. But I do think it's important that you edit your caption to fit your platform. Um, for instance, in Instagram, I'll always put, you know, link in bio for whatever I'm talking about. Make sure you get that out of there when it's on Facebook. It doesn't make sense in Facebook land. And then it's, you know, it just, it's lazy marketing honestly i think um what else was i gonna say oh about stories i love stories i think they're fun but i use them almost as like an auxiliary method like it's it's not going to be like my main thing that i want to live in my grid forever but maybe it's just like a cute little thing we did at our office i want to share or maybe i just i did a feed post about a new listing maybe i'll put some like additional photos in the stories so I, I do think stories are fun and a lot of people use stories like exclusively now, especially younger people. So I wouldn't like ignore them totally, but I also wouldn't use them as like your primary like feed source in Instagram. How, how do you, stories to my understanding don't show any kind of um, statistics, right? Like you don't get insights from stories? Yeah, like when I do saying? a feed, I can see how many people liked it. It's so awesome. You, hey, you I, if I hit 50. How many people have seen your story? What's that? 24 hours. It will show you the number of people that saw your story. Okay. It only but that's shows the only the insight you get. Okay. Because 
I can see how many people like all the other feed posts, whether they're mine or not. And that just tells me how popular someone is or someone isn't. I don't ever, I can't see that feedback as a viewer of stories. So I, I wonder about that, but you're saying you can't. Yeah, you can only see it on, on your own story. How many times it's been viewed. Okay. Um, Chrissy brings up a really good point um, that the story lasts for 24 hours and then it goes away. So it is a little bit ephemeral. And so it, it, it's maybe more um, tantalizing because of that, because it doesn't exist forever. So Steve, what, what comment did you say to me the other day? Scarcity, scarcity does something or something like that? With scarcity comes value. With scarcity comes value. That's true. So um, yeah, like people like me more, the less I'm around. So I, that, that's the type of thing we're talking about. Um, and so um, use the stories, get good at them, have fun with them, uh, but know that they're going to be gone. And so it maybe builds a little bit more suspense or a little bit more stimulation using, using the story. Chrissy mentions a couple other things that um, are helpful to keep in mind here is that Instagram does not let you link which is another reason it feels to me more like a party and less like a shopping mall like Facebook, because you can't just link and then be gone. You can't just go into some other store and leave your friends behind. You're always in this party, whether you're looking at stories or feeds, and it's sort of a closed environment, it feels like. Um, so you're not using Instagram to say, hey, check out my link or check out this new video and link here. It doesn't work that way. Um, you can use hashtags to sort of get around that a little bit, but it's really a thing to just pass along secrets, I think, to your buddies and to your friends. Um, and so um, Chrissy's very, very correct. If you're putting in LinkedIn bio or whatever other things in your Instagram caption, get rid of them when you move it over to Facebook. Otherwise, you look pretty silly. Okay. Um, let's talk about hashtags for just a minute. Let me go back to. Uh, because hashtags might be very scary to some of us, um, but they're kind of fun. And as long as you don't look at them as, as a, um, a scary thing, I think you're gonna be okay. Let's go back to Steve's. I think he had a couple of hashtags. Hello. On that post. Uh, okay, what is a hashtag? I'm gonna explain it. And then those of you that are way more smart, or than me or, um, can, can flesh this out. A hashtag is a way to, if I make a post about skiing and I want other people in New Hampshire or in Chile who ski or somewhere else to maybe find me or find my post about skiing, I can do a hashtag and somehow the internet got the idea that if a hashtag if, if people use the same text after that, like the first one, hashtag just saying, anything that uses that hashtag in their caption all goes into the same place. It's really a fascinating thing, but it's like a, it's like a filter that, or a, a, a magnet that just draws everything with that hashtag into the same place. So I may not know who Steve Harney or Derek Svenningson is, but if I hashtag something like great day on skis, anyone else who uses that hashtag or who wants to look at it is gonna see my post. So it's a, it's a really fascinating, um, and truly it's a brilliant uh, thing that the internet did to make hashtags a place where all these people can meet, even though I would never know to follow uh, whoever the post did the post. So if we click, see they're all live. Okay, here's a real basic one, hashtag real estate. And then OMS, I wanna know a couple of the basic hashtags you use in each of your offices when you do your posts. So let's click on hashtag real estate. Okay, you see that the thing changed up here, it goes to explore slash tag slash real estate. 21 million posts in the real estate hashtag. So Steve Harney, and if Kelly Maves just put something new on, on the market and did hashtag real estate, it's gonna show up here. Now with 21 million, you're like, oh sweet, 21 million people are gonna see it. No, it means you are gonna, your post is gonna be with 21 million others. Harder to find, yes, but more traffic. So it's a little bit of this and that. Um, usually when you type in a hashtag to your caption, it'll, it'll populate and it'll show you how many posts have been there. So maybe if you did real estate in CO as a hashtag, it would say 72,000. Or maybe if you did Grand Junction real estate, it would say 1,200. 
So you can decide what number you're comfortable with in terms of a hashtag. Um, but so these are all hashtags about real estate or people that used the hashtag real estate. Um, most recent here. So you're going to see a lot of stuff. This is a story here, I think. But that's what hashtags do is they say, here's a post. And now we're going to ship it into this big container with which has this hashtag moniker on it. Okay. You might be thinking, I don't want to do that. Totally fine. You don't have to. Okay. I've gotten probably five followers in my personal Instagram from using hashtags. And I'm not doing it to build followers. I'm just doing it because it's, it's another way to build community uh, through the social media is to use hashtags that other people might identify with. Again, Instagram is all about identification. So if you use hashtags in the right way, um, and let's take a, another look at what he did. Uh, housing market, Steve Harney, real estate, um, steamboat real estate. I would hashtag if I'm a steamboat agent every time. I do Sun Valley real estate for all of my offices posts, no matter if they're about real estate or not. Because if someone out there in Columbus, Ohio, is thinking about coming here to ski and types in hashtag Sun Valley real estate, I want her or him to see my posts. Okay, that's how that works. They don't have to find my Instagram page, they have to find the hashtag, which is much easier because look at how many people are out there using hashtags. Okay. Derek, so, would you use that in Instagram and Facebook or? It's a great question, Bobby. I find this to be way more, and I need someone to, to chime in here because I, this is where my, um, another place where my ignorance shows. I find hashtags to be way more useful in Instagram and than <laughs> Facebook. Um, I, I don't know if it's just because it looks better or, or what, but Chelsea. Um, but it's okay. there more for a short time, where on Facebook it's there more intense. I'm sorry. It's only there for like 24 hours? No, Instagram? no, your Instagram feed is there forever unless you delete your post. It's the story which lives at the top that's only there for 24 hours. So that one has a little bit less connectability to the big world. But your feed, Bobby, which is probably 98% of use is through the feed, not the story, that those hashtags live forever. Um, okay. So Chelsea or, or Chrissy or Jennifer, someone that's smarter than me, um, Tell me about hashtags in Facebook, because I never do them on Facebook, or rarely. I think only Instagram. Why? Um, well, because on Facebook, you can't really click on it. Like, I don't know, it's just not, I, I just think it's a different platform. So also on Instagram, you can actually like follow hashtags yeah. just as you follow people, but on Facebook, it just doesn't work the same. Like you can click on a hashtag on Facebook and find the posts, but you can't like follow it like you follow a person's account. So it's just not as beneficial to use in Facebook. You totally can, but it doesn't carry the same weight that it does in, in Instagram. Right. I'm going to show an example of that right now. Steve Harney's company is called Keeping Current Matters. And he, he does not have an Instagram page for that, either, but it's a hashtag. And so... His stuff goes to that, but also anything else that someone posts to Keeping Current Matters hashtag goes to this as well. So in essence, he's created like a, uh, a co-op. Think of a hashtag as a co-op where anything that you hashtag is that thing is going to live in that little store. So here you see him. This is all of their stuff. But this duo of agents, and I forget where they're from, they take Keeping Current Matters information and then they brand it to themselves in their black dresses. Uh, and all of their stuff, hashtag is keeping current matters, goes on to here. So anyone following this tag, which I do, gets to see personally branded stuff. The, the Mootloo group from somewhere, uh, Boston, hashtag there, so their stuff shows up here. Uh, 1,306 posts, that doesn't mean Steve Harney's Keeping Current Matters company posted 1,300 times. It means that 1,300 times people have hashtagged this, and that's a really cool connected group, right? Like in, in many ways, and Chelsea, maybe this is to your point, but maybe not. In many ways, the more specific your hashtags can be, the more likely you will find um, affinity groups or people that identify with what you're saying. So hashtag real estate, 21 million. 
<laughs> Dude, I'm out of here. I don't like big cities, right? Hashtag real, Sun Valley real estate or mountain luxury with 4,000 posts. I'm probably going to use that one because it's more likely to be seen and maybe more likely to identify. Okay, with with people. Um, Chelsea, what was your what was your uh, point? I sort of didn't really read it. It says update from the IG experts, Robert. Um, hashtags. The magic number is 30. What does that mean? 30 hashtags in your thing or 30? Yeah, um, to get maximum visibility on Instagram, apparently the magic number is 30. Um, a really good friend of mine does a lot of, I know, that's a lot. I was blown away when she told me that. Um, a friend of mine does a lot of market research um, and mainly on Instagram, Facebook, uh, social media platforms. Um, and she said that what they do is they will actually like not to put that in your content because it'll bog down your content, put it in a comment on your, on your post and have 30 hashtags on there that are relevant to whatever you're doing. If you can't do 30, the closer that you can get to that number, the better, because the more people that that is going to reach. So yeah, you can just click on that comment box and then um, and if you look, we do that, I noticed Chrissy does that um, and we also do that here um, at Steamboat in ours. What's yours? Um, Steamboat Springs maybe. Okay. Yeah. All of your offices, by the way, have this with this call, CBDP, no periods, no underscores. Grand Junction, Sun Valley, Telluride, um, Twin Falls, I think we'll be getting one if you don't already. So which one should I look at here, Chelsea? Um, either, the first, either of the first two. Okay, great. So this is exactly what Chelsea is talking about. And folks, please, please, please. I'm not, can someone mute themselves? Bobby, it might be you. There's some background noise. No, I think it's me. I'll mute it. Okay. Please don't run to your Instagram after this call and start jamming it full of hashtags. Get comfortable with it, figure out why you're gonna do what you're gonna do and how you're gonna do it. But what Chelsea is saying is that here is her, here is the caption that you put in when you load the photo. This week on Ask an Agent, if you could travel back in time, what era would you choose or not choose in Catherine's case and why? Okay, so typically, and this is the first time I've ever heard of this, so this is really fascinating to me, Chelsea. I would put my hashtags in the caption here. So I type, 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 and then hashtag, 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 post. What Chelsea's saying is that you post your caption with no hashtags, and then you go to this comment button, which is the little you know, dialogue uh, circle, um, and then you're able to leave a comment, and then you type in your hashtags. As many that relate to biz to the specific business as also does not relate to the specific business, but relates to whatever you're posting. So um, like time travel, 50s, Queen Victoria, none of that has anything to do with real estate. But then you go to the bottom and it says Coldwell Banker, Colorado, Steamboat Real Estate. Um, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get as wide of an audience as you possibly can get to check, a, check out on this kind of stuff. And then if people, you know, type in Queen Victoria, it might not be what they're looking for. It probably isn't. Um, but if someone thinks it's funny or thinks it's entertaining, then they'll come onto our page. Excellent. Um, I have Chris, a question again. Yeah, go ahead, Bobby. Um, so you're not charged for hashtagging, regardless of how many people you send it out to versus Facebook when you uh, a property on the market and you want it to go to a specific address area, right? Correct. Yeah. What Bobby's talking about, and I don't think we're going to get there today, which is fine, but she's talking about boosting a post, which allows you to send it for 20 bucks for seven days or something to a specific zip code or a specific demographic. Instagram is very much not like that. You can spend money on Instagram. I don't know how. <laughs> I, I know you can do it. But um, it's it's more about it's more about casting a light, Bobby, um, and seeing if you can see other people out there that uh, that want to know your stuff without having to spend any money. That wasn't a very good uh, analogy, but it's it's just a quieter way to reach people, which is why I like it more than Facebook. Um, Chrissy, 
and I don't mean I don't mean to be calling on you or Shelby or anyone. Has anyone else heard of this in the comments is better for your hashtags? Yeah, that's that's what I do also because like Chelsea, I put a bunch of hashtags in mine. Um, but I would say like if you're just starting to use Instagram or just getting familiar with it, maybe pick like two or three hashtags and put them in your caption is fine. If you have between like two and four, I think they can totally live in your caption. If you're going to be having like 10, 20, 30 hashtags, then yeah, put them in your, in your comments rather than your caption. Okay. Here's a tip for those of you that are advanced enough to be using multiple hashtags and, and want to do the same thing. In your, in your phone, on, in your notes or something, type them out. Make sure they're all spelled right and have them live somewhere so you can just copy and paste as opposed to have to spend five minutes every time with those godforsaken little keys and my huge thumbs and my bad vision typing out. Next thing you know, I'm typing in um, for let's go skiing is um, let's, let's go swing, right? And I didn't notice it. And next thing I know, I'm getting a bunch of adults who want to go swing, you know, and it's like, no, that's not the hashtag I wanted, right? So the best thing to do, best practice is in your notes, type out your list of hashtags that you want to use every time. And then each time you post, go in your notes, copy, paste, and uh, it, it can work that way. Um, this is great. Uh, you Bozeman's and, and Steamboat's too, but Bozeman's um, Instagrams are, are just super, super tight. I love them. They're really, really good. Uh, and so you guys are doing a nice job there. Um, okay, what else did I want to cover about Instagram? There was one other thing. Oh, here's, here's an important thing, okay? Um, well, let me just show you mine because, I don't know. So here's what I, here's the opposite of what we're talking about. This is what I have done. Like I try to be funny, ski Rex instead of T-Rex, whatever. Thanks for the awesome ski day, Sun Valley. And then in the caption, I put my four hashtags. Like Chelsea said, trying to be funny. Snorkel, Sun Valley, because I want Sun Valley to see this. Don't I snow you because I can't help myself. Uh, and this is one of the reasons my child hates me. And then deep thinker because I, I can't help myself. So have some fun. Be, be legitimate, uh, don't be gross, and then you get some comments uh, back and, um, and that sort of thing. This would allow me to share it to my Facebook or to Twitter or email or have a link. Um, I never use that, but uh, I can comment on my own thing here. And then the other thing I want to say about all of this, dang it, face, uh, Instagram, oh, that's it, that's it, is, these stats here, okay? Um, oh, let me show you one other thing. So this was, this was a four panel thing. You can get an app called, uh, well, it lives on Instagram. It's called, what the heck is it called? It's called Layout, and it allows you to choose a different layout and put four different photos, or three photos, or seven photos, or a video here and two photos, and you can do this type of thing. And it's super simple called layout and it actually comes with your Instagram now, okay? The other thing you can do is uh, one like this, which you can choose to have multiple photos that run, not in a slideshow because it's not automatic, but as a swipe to have more photos in one post, okay? Obviously this was all about Christmas lights in our recent snowstorm. Um, this is my personal thing, this isn't the office one. Um, Snow V light, a beautiful battle, Ida Snow, because I can't help myself, Sun Valley, Year of the Pig, because it was on New Year's Day of, of, for the Chinese New Year, and Holiday Lights. So a couple silly ones and a couple ones that might be um, get some interest out there, okay? But here's the key of what I want to say, and we're almost out of time here. You guys have been either really patient or um, just super uh, cynical, I'm not sure. Okay, if you have an Instagram account, and I hope I'm speaking to everyone, you don't live in a vacuum. It only gains traction when you take it places. It only builds followers when you follow others. You can't be the king on the hill and expect everybody to be like, you need to look at my Instagram because here I am on the top of the snow bank. No, it's got to be because you are engaging others. Take five minutes every day for the next week 
and follow other accounts, personal accounts, business accounts, um, hashtags, Grand Junction scheme, type in Grand Junction scheme, hashtag Grand Junction scheme, let's say, and see if there's anything there and follow it. Mountain bikers, follow it and build a, a network that way. It doesn't always happen, but a lot of times if you follow someone that you don't know or a, a, you know, a famous photographer or whatever, sometimes they'll follow you back. And so it's a way to, to build audience um, without spending money, as Bobby noted. Am I going to make any sales from this? I don't think so, but here's what, here's what it's going to do. It's going to continue to identify you as a relevant, sophisticated, tech-savvy, authoritative, agent in your market what do you have to do to to be able to obtain those uh statistics for posts and follows just have an account these are always there if four people stop following me because of this uh thing i just did in two hours this will say 538 so these are always right there um you can you create a name that is either that is somewhat catchy and if it's a business page you might do you know bobby sells twin falls or twin falls real estate or something like that um make something that's going to be obvious but then your name is in there as well so people if they want to know my account they wouldn't have to know it's decomposed they could type in my my first name and guess at my last name you do your profile a um, bunch of other stuff it's pretty simple. Instagram is designed to be simple and it's designed to be visually friendly. It's not designed to sell. It's not designed to um, be super texty. It's about visuals. Okay. Um, Are you going to cover Facebook next time? Probably. Yeah. So even though I'll be honest with you, Bobby, every time I cover, I do anything with Facebook, I feel like I've been beaten up because the thing is such a gigantic it's, it's like going to New York City on, on uh, New Year's Eve. That's how I feel Facebook. It's like, oh, my God, i got to be compressed from even thinking about Facebook. But, yes. That's for your business page, though, can you obtain the statistics like you do for Instagram? Yep. Yep. That's a huge part of the uh, Facebook business page algorithms is you can, you can see so much stuff. It's amazing. It, it, again, it's almost overkill what you can see. So we will cover that. Maybe not next time because we've got something else in store. But... Uh, in a very future, <laughs> a very near upcoming uh, fan club. Yes. <laughs> all right. I'm going to stop sharing because I'm tired of looking at all my stuff here. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, I think only Chelsea says, look at who is commenting on your competitors, IG accounts. Also, what do you mean, Chelsea? Um, so if you go to other real estate Instagram pages that are in your area, take a look at who's commenting and liking their stuff, start following them. Um, because that's your target audience right there. Especially the people that are taking the time to comment. If they're taking the time to comment, then you definitely should be following them. Say it one more time because I think it's a really valid point, but, um, I've been talking for almost an hour. So people have stopped listening. So say it again. Okay, so just any, any other um, real estate agencies in the area, go to their pages, look at who's commenting on their stuff, look at who's liking their stuff, start following those people because that's going to be your target audience and that's going to be your main focus, especially if they're commenting. If they're commenting, those are the people that you want on your page. Because they are the engaged type. And the more that you engage with other people, the more that they'll engage with you. So in the morning when I get to work, after I finish doing all of my little things, right before I get going on my email, I just go through Instagram and I just start liking a whole bunch of stuff. Um, people love feeling special and important. So, <laughs> And then all of a sudden we start getting comments. Uh, clearly, Chelsea is from the generation where everybody got trophies and all of that kind of stuff. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> those are great. Those are great points. What a cool concept! You, if you, you need to find ten agents in your market who, to follow, yeah. not in your mm -hmm. office. You should follow everyone in your office. But think about the agents who are doing business in your market. Follow them because it it shows that you're a player too. You're going out and dressing up just like them, and then. Do exactly what Chelsea says. You're not poaching their clients or anything, but you're just making sure that all those other people who are engaging and doing stuff know that you're a real estate agent too. 
It's all part of being top of mind. It's all contributing to your presence, your uh, exposure in your market and your expertise for that matter. Um, one thing you can do with the Keeping Current Matters, it, and you can share posts from other people. You can take a Keeping Current Matters, like they've got tons of great stats, they're really graphically pleasing, and you can share that onto yours without turning it into your own thing with a brand like Alan Brown's face on it, like here's my recent post. No, you can just share it uh, to your own feed and help your uh, Instagram followers learn about the market that way. So, so much to do. And again, this is a rabbit hole folks. And I hate the fact that I just took an hour getting into the minutia of, of Instagram because my message needs to stay clear is that this should not, this is not your business. Right, Alan? This is not the thing that's going to catapult you from a $3 million producer to an $8 million producer. It's, it's a tiny piece of the meal, the biggest cut of which, whether you're vegetarian or, or a carnivore, the biggest cut of which should be the amount of time you spend on the phone talking with clients, past clients, sphere of influence, and as Steve will say, getting out there and convincing people you are a salesperson without being a salesperson. That's your main job. This is just sort of the, the asparagus with the vinaigrette on it or something like that. But it's not, it's not the, the roast beef or the, uh, the uh, salmon. It's not. What, Alan? Oh, <laughs> you're such a good guy. Okay, uh, that's it. Hey, thanks a ton, everybody. And it was good to see some new faces. Uh, Katari, good to see you. And Ty, uh, you've, you've held a smile this whole time. It's amazing to me. I don't know how you do that, but it's going to serve you well in the real real estate world. That is for sure. OMs and, and others, thanks a ton for your expertise. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome, Donna. Excellent. Okay. Um, keep up the great work, everybody. Those of you in coaching and those of you in Twin Falls, mastermind at two. I'll make sure that everybody has that blocked out. But uh, Julie, our MD in Vail, is going to tell us about how to be even smarter than we already are. So have a great weekend, everybody. And uh, we will see many of you on Tuesday. Okay. All right. Thanks, Lisa. Okay. Bye, everybody.